Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. So let us continue with the male reproductive system. So we shall consider the next concept that is the male sex hormone. So let us see what are those different hormones which controls the various aspects of the male reproductive system. Okay, so how the development and how the physiology of the male reproductive system is controlled by these hormones and how the hormonal regulation takes place in turn which controls the release of these male sex hormones. Okay. So, <coughs> coming to the hormonal control of the testes. Okay. So, basically the male androgen it is the testosterone. So, that is the main androgen which is released by the testes, okay, the Leydig cells which are present in between the neighboring seminiferous tubules, they secrete this hormone testosterone and this in turn will control several functions in the body. Okay, so, let us see how this hormonal regulation or how the hormonal control affects the release of several hormones. Okay. Now, this release of hormones usually begins at the puberty. So, by unknown mechanism only at puberty these neurosecretory cells which are present in the hypothalamus they start secreting the gonadotropin releasing hormone GnRH as we have seen what does G GnRH do? It will act on the anterior pituitary right. So, it will act on the gonadotrophs. Now, what are gonadotrophs? It is a type of cell which is present in the anterior pituitary right. There are five types of cells and gonadotrophs as we have seen it produces two types of hormones that is FSH and LH. Okay. So, GnRH will reach the anterior pituitary and stimulate the gonadotrophs to release the two gonadotropins. These are known as gonadotropins right the two hormones that is luteinizing hormone that is LH and the follicle stimulating hormone that is FSH. <coughs> now, let us see what are the different actions which are mediated by these two hormones. So, LH it stimulates the Leydig cells which are present in between the seminiferous tubules as we have seen. So, they stimulate the Leydig cells ok the LH it stimulates the Leydig cell to secrete the hormone testosterone. So, these cells will have the receptors for the LH this is LH ok. So, this hormone it will bind to the LH receptors which are located on the Leydig cells as a result of this it will stimulate the release of the hormone testosterone as we have seen the function of Leydig cell is to synthesize and secrete the hormone testosterone. So, this steroid hormone it is actually synthesized from the cholesterol ok. So, it is the main androgen which is released and since it is lipid soluble in nature it can easily diffuse out of the cells it will enter the interstitial fluid from where it will enter the bloodstream ok. Now, why a negative feedback this testosterone can suppress the secretion of the LH. So, its control of release it can be controlled by the negative feedback. Now, what do you mean by negative feedback mechanism? Yes, whenever the levels are high it will inhibit the release of hormones which are stimulating their release right. So, which which are the hormones which are stimulating the release of this testosterone? What makes testosterone being released from the Leydig cells? Yes, it is the LH which is produced by the anterior pituitary and in turn LH release is promoted by the GnRH right. So, high levels of testosterone will inhibit the release of this LH. So, LH release will be inhibited and also it will inhibit the release of GnRH. So, when GnRH is not released in turn LH will also be not released right. So, negative feedback mechanism will control its 
release itself. The levels will be continuously monitored and when there are more levels of this hormone it will act on the releasing hormone on the in the hypothalamus as well as in the anterior pituitary ok. Now in certain target cells in the say external genitals or the prostate there is an enzyme called 5 alpha reductase. So, this enzyme can convert this testosterone to one more androgen that is dihydrotestosterone, dihydrotestosterone or DHT. So, this in turn may act on the several aspects ok. So, this in turn also produces several actions ok. Now, <coughs> let us talk about the next hormone which is released by the anterior pituitary. So, along with the LH there is one more hormone which is released right FSH. So, this FSH indirectly it stimulates the process of spermatogenesis. What is spermatogenesis? Yes, it is the process of formation of the sperms right ok. So, that is stimulated by the FSH. So, it will act on to the spermatogenic cells so that it will stimulate the process of spermatogenesis. Apart from that the FSH and the testosterone ok this one and this one both can act on the Sertoli cells in a synergistic manner meaning both will have the same action. So, both of them are acting on the Sertoli cells, these are Sertoli cells right to generate androgen binding protein, androgen binding protein means what it is a protein which can bind to the androgen. So, this more and more ABP is released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. And from here it will be again released into the interstitial fluid ok. So, this ABP it will bind to the testosterone keeping the concentration of testosterone very high. So, it will remain bound to it. So, as you can see that any substance which is bound to the proteins it will be restricted to the vascular compartment right. So, it keeps its levels high. Okay, apart from that testosterone it stimulates the final step in the spermatogenesis within the seminiferous tubules. Okay, spermiogenesis is stimulated by the testosterone as well. Now, this process of spermatogenesis it in turn can control the release of the FSH. Okay, by releasing one more hormone. Okay, so, once the production of the sperms, okay, the required amount of sperms are being produced. Now, what is the function of this FSH? As we have seen that indirectly it stimulates the process of spermatogenesis, right. So, once the appropriate level is reached, the Sertoli cells it will release one more hormone called as inhibit. Now, why it is named in this particular manner? It is because it inhibits the release of the FSH, it decreases the release of the FSH from the anterior pituitary ok. That is why it is known as inhibit, it inhibits the release ok. So, what will happen as a result of inhibition of the release of this FSH? When it is decreased what will happen? The levels of FSH when they decrease what will happen? <coughs> yes, of course the spermatogenesis process which was stimulated by the FSH that process will get slowed down right. And on the contrary what will happen if the spermatogenesis is proceeding too slowly? If there are less number of sperms which are produced? what will happen? The release of this inhibin it will get decreased, less of inhibin will be released. So, as a result of this what will happen? This inhibitory action on the FSH release that will be ruled out right. When levels of inhibin decrease 
obviously its inhibitory action on the FSH release that is also ruled out. So, more and more FSH will be released it will act on the Sertoli cells and the seminiferous tubules and it will promote the spermatogenesis right. So, rate of spermatogenesis will increase okay. now apart from this the two hormones testosterone and dihydrotestosterone both of these can bind to the same androgen receptors which are found within the nuclei. So, they will have to reach the nuclei of the target cell where the receptors for these androgens are present. So, once this hormone receptor complex is formed it will regulate the gene expression that is some of the gene expression it will take place some of the genes will be turned on and some of them will be turned off. Okay, so, accordingly the protein synthesis may take place or it may be inhibited. Now, coming to the effects produced by the androgens, these androgens, let us see what are their role in the body. Okay. First one is the prenatal development, prenatal meaning before the birth, the testosterone, it stimulates the male pattern of development of the reproductive system. Also, we have seen that the testes, they descend downwards, right, they are actually developed near the kidneys, but as the fetus grows it descend down into the scrotum right. So, this is also promoted by these androgens. Then the dihydrotestosterone this stimulates the development of external genitals. When the testosterone it gets converted into estrogen in the brain, estrogen is actually a feminizing hormone. So, this may play a role in development of certain regions of the brain in the males. Next function of the androgens is development of the male sexual characteristics. Okay, so, both these testosterone as well as dihydrotestosterone. So, these will bring about the development and enlargement of the male sex organs and the development of masculine secondary sexual characteristics. Okay, secondary sexual characteristics are those which distinguishes the males from the females. Okay, so, these what are the secondary sexual characteristics? So, these include the muscular and skeletal growth. So, this will result in wider shoulders and narrow hip in the males, facial and chest hair. Okay, their growth is promoted. So, also more hair grows in other parts of the body, thickening of the skin may take place, increase in the sebaceous gland that is the oil gland secretions. Also enlargement of the larynx will take place as a result of which deepening of the voice may take place in the males as compared to the females. Next role is in the development of sexual functions. So, androgens they contribute towards the male sexual behavior and also spermatogenesis is promoted as we have seen also the sexual drive that is the libido, libido means sexual drive. So, this libido both in males and females we have seen that androgen is released in females as well right. So, sexual drive or the libido both in males and females is produced by these androgens correct in the females also the adrenal cortex it releases some amount of androgen right then next role is stimulation of the anabolism. <coughs> so, it is anabolic activity it is responsible for the protein synthesis okay. so that is why the muscles are heavier the bone mass also is more in males as compared to the females. So, this is to do with the different actions of these male sex hormones coming to the regulation of the testosterone secretion. Okay, so, as already we have seen by negative feedback mechanism the control of release of the testosterone can be taking place right in the body. Okay. Now, whenever the testosterone concentration in the blood increases above normal, what will happen? The homeostasis will get disrupted, right? 
due to the increase in the blood levels of testosterone. So, as a result of which it will have a negative feedback action right. So, it, it will cause less of the GnRH to be released from the hypothalamus. Okay, the neurosecretory cells will release less amount of GnRH. Why? What does GnRH do? Gonadotropin releasing hormone, it stimulates the anterior pituitary to release the gonadotrops, right? Which in turn will promote the Leydig cell to secrete the testosterone. This is what we have seen. So, whenever the levels of testosterone are high, the cells of the hypothalamus which are producing this GnRH, it will be acted upon. So, that there is decreased release of the GnRH. As a result of decrease in the GnRH, what will happen to the <coughs> gonadotrophs? They will secrete less amount of LH, right? LH levels will be decreased. So, as a re result of decrease in the LH secretion, what does LH do? It acts on the Leydig cell to produce the testosterone, right? So, as the levels of LH decrease, what happens to this? Leydig cells which are producing the testosterone, they will secrete less amount of testosterone. Okay, thus it will decrease the blood levels of testosterone back to normal. So, the return of homeostasis will take place. On the contrary, what will happen when the levels fall? <coughs> so, if these levels fall, what will happen? it will result in stimulation of the release of the GnRH, which in turn will act on the anterior pituitary to increase the secretion of the LH. This in turn will act on the Leydig cell to increase the secretion of testosterone and it will come back to normal. Okay. So, this is how the regulation of secretion of the testosterone take place that is a male androgen. So, we have seen how hormonal control of testes take place that is the main androgen is the testosterone and it is it gets converted into dihydro testosterone as well. So, both these androgens will control several functions in the body. Okay. So, this is the reference. Thank you for watching.